Good morning, guys. In the last video, I talked about how God played Satan, played God, played Satan. What that is, you guys, is our double cross, which is the two X's, okay? Double cross. What the double cross is going to be is your double portion. Um, it's the double portion of Elisha. Okay, so... I've been seeing us as some, uh, with some names that might not seem that good, that holy, okay? I've seen us as the king of Babylon. I've seen us as Lucifer redeemed. Um, so I hope you've been looking at my community tab because I've explained that a little bit, okay? So... Before we go any further, let me just say, I believe what the journey looks like to this point. And I, I think that we're getting to a completion, you guys. And of course, there's always more to learn, but a conclusion of the second, third stage, okay? Um, we believe on this channel that Christ was our example of God. And everybody, all the Jews, were watching for a Messiah who was going to bring war and who was going to destroy the evil people. And this is why the Jews couldn't recognize Messiah when he came, because he looked nothing like that warrior. Um, he looked nothing like that prideful king like that leader who was going to stand up there with his arms open and say, come all and worship me. Okay, that's just not who Jesus is. And the one who's, who wants the fame and the glory would be Lucifer, you guys. And so many people who worship Jesus are actually, they have an image in their mind of a character who is not Jesus whatsoever. <clears throat> so this is important to understand. You know, m most of mainstream Christianity has an image of in their mind of the coming Messiah who is nothing like the coming Messiah, okay? So I want to tell you what I'm seeing for this double portion of Elisha. And when I had the revelation this morning, it, it was quite, quite astounding for me. So let me tell you what this looks like. So we know, you guys, that Moses, um, he, when he first started his journey in Exodus 4, God asked Moses, what are you carrying in your hand? And Moses said, it's my staff, it's my rod. Okay. And God said, throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses got freaked out and he ran. But God said, Moses, take the serpent by the tail and it shall become a rod in your hand. So Moses took the serpent by the tail and it became his staff. When he got to Egypt, he challenged the magicians of Pharaoh and threw down his staff, and it became a serpent. Okay, So Moses was wielding serpent power. And in Exodus 34, when Moses went to get the commandments from God, he came down from the mount and his face shone, his glowing face that they show in the Ten Commandments, okay? But in the Hebrew, it says he grew horns. So Moses grew horns and was carrying a serpent staff and then brought devastating plagues upon Egypt, okay? It, it, this power looked evil, most definitely especially because Moses grew horns and was carrying a serpent staff. Okay, 
So let us come full circle and you're not going to believe what this is. Okay. Um, Moses brought everybody truly into the hot burning desert and they wandered for 40 years, tempted in the desert for 40 years. By who? The serpent, the devil. This is the same story as when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness by the devil. Same story, okay? When you finally get to the promised land, you don't have any of that anymore. Um, what you do with Moses he becomes Messiah. It's the same language, you guys, but it is a journey from Moshe to Masha to Mashiach. Okay. So it's, it's a journey to get from Moses to the Messiah. Moses couldn't lead them out of the wilderness. He couldn't lead them into the promised land. And this is why Joshua, Yeshua had to do it. Okay. Joshua took over after Moses died, okay? Now, it would seem, you guys, that Moses was a bit of a magician, okay? What do we call people who are doing things like Moses did? I'm turning the water into blood, calling the plagues of the frogs, and everything else he did in the wilderness, You would call that today magic. You may call it a miracle if you'd like. It's the same thing, okay? There was another magician who came to this world that we know of for sure, and that was Jesus. He was able to heal people. He was able to pull bread and fish out of thin air, right? Um, He was also magic. And if you want to call it miracles, you can, because some people believe that the word magic is evil. Okay. All depends on your perspective, but to the lay person that they might think that this Messiah looks like a magician, right? Okay. Especially those who have no knowledge of Christ's miracles. Okay. Okay. You are going to get a double portion, and you are going to be both of these characters. So I'm going to draw them for you. Okay, this is my grand illustration of Moses, okay? Now, what does the Bible say? say he he did Moses's face shown Moses's face grew horns is what it says in the Hebrew this is why if you go look at any sculpture of Moses from you know the middle ages from the great artists of the day He has horns on his head, and he's carrying the Ten Commandments, okay? Moses grew horns. Let's draw Moses' staff, then. Moses carried a serpent staff. Okay, there's Moses' rod, which became the serpent's tail, T-A-L-E, the story of the serpent. It's our story, you guys, okay? When Moses was in the wilderness, I'm trying to remember, guys, he, were they, the Hebrews were bit by serpents, right? And Moses lifted up the brass or copper serpent upon a pole in the wilderness. And he said, 
look upon this brass serpent and be and live. He said, look upon it and live, right? The New Testament says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Okay, I'm going to draw that for you. Look upon it and live as Moses lifted up the serpent upon a pole in the wilderness. So must the son of man be lifted up. Okay. There's the serpent upon a pole. Well, Jesus, like um, Moses, also was a shepherd of the people, you guys. And so he would have carried a shepherd's staff um, theoretically also, right? He was the great shepherd. And this is going to be your double portion. What Jesus had, you are going to add to what Moses had, okay? So we have seen this symbol many times, and I'll draw your double portion for you, okay? Okay, so let me show you what this is. Okay, guys, so the, the messenger, the messenger of the gods with his double portion, and with his healing power, okay? The caduceus being the greatest symbol of healing. Here's our caduceus. Okay, so the messenger of the gods. Messenger in Greek means healer, uh, not healer, angel. Messenger means angel, agalos, okay? In Hebrew, it's malek, which is king. Eventually, okay, it's the word king, king of the angels. You know, the Bible says you shall judge angels, doesn't it? Okay. Um, messenger is also a transliteration eventually, um, all stemming from the same root as uh, Messiah, Moshe. For some reason, I, I want to give you the meaning of Moses' name, which is one who is drawn from the water, as Moses was, right? He was in a basket, in an ark, and then he was drawn from the water by Pharaoh's daughter, okay? So, guys, not only did we master the baptism of water, by getting into the ark. The next step is to get off the ark at Mount Ararat and to stand on holy ground, which is what Ararat means. It means um, the curse is reversed and it means holy ground in your concordance, okay? Holy ground is where you stand with your sandals off and your sandals represent um, your first snake skin okay the one that was unrefined and you stand before the burning bush which is the fire baptism which is upon the world okay so 
we started with Mercury, like I said, November, December of 2020. And I feel like this has come full circle. Um, it's Elisha's double portion, meaning not only did you manage to understand the messages from Satan, but you have also managed the messages, messages of El, God himself. Okay? So this is your double portion, and I see it as your ability to go between heaven and earth. And probably in a more literal sense than we have seen to this point, okay? Okay, I was so very honored by this, but the word I was given for Mercury, the messenger of the gods, you guys, the healer who brings one into hell, but then can also bring one to heaven also. Both shepherds, okay? Moses was only half the journey. Messiah is the second half of the journey. The word I was given was magnanimous, and he's the magnanimous shepherd is what I was given for this, and I wanted to read that definition for you. Okay. Generous in forgiving an insult or injury. Generous in forgiving an insult or injury. Free from petty resentfulness or vindictiveness. Guys, w are you waiting for the vengeance of God? Well, who haven't you forgiven? Because to truly forgive, you understand that nobody, not one soul, was guilty in the first place. That's true forgiveness. There was never any guilt. Never. Nobody has ever been guilty. Okay? Magnanimous. High-minded. Noble. Noble. Proceeding from or revealing generosity or nobility of mind and character. Oh my goodness, I didn't look at the, <laughs> the etymology, but it just struck me what this is. Okay, um, the etymology of the word magnanimous, great, sold, S-O-U-L-E-D, great. Great spirit, soul, and mind. If you look at the, I, I'm sorry guys, I forget if it's the Latin root or the Greek root, where the word great comes from. Where the word great comes from. It's mega, mega which is the Omega. Okay? Omega. The Alpha and the Omega. Meaning, we are getting to the letter Z. Z, the end of the alphabet. Okay, guys? We've, we've got the double X, which is the double portion. Okay? We are getting... I wasn't with you when the Y came you guys, it was in the summer that the Y came in the sky exactly as I drew on my Zodiac calendar, okay? Maybe someday we'll go back and look at that. But this is the Omega, 
This is the Z. The final piece of the puzzle, maybe. Um, the final book in our library, possibly. And this is going to be, you know, the end of the story, the fairy tale ending, um, which extends for, you know, many months and many, many years, you guys. This is also the magnet, um, magnanimous, you guys, and magnesia, which is the philosopher's stone, which is the white stone in your forehead. Okay, so let me pause. The most beautiful part probably of this entire thing, you guys, is what the messenger is in you, okay? It's messenger RNA. It's your three strands, guys. Three strands. It's your extra strand, the caduceus of DNA, messenger RNA, which is your angel DNA. Okay. So that I believe, you guys, I believe this is the full picture here that we've been waiting for. Um, we... I hope you can understand um, that if people don't understand the symbolism and all of that, you know, look at how this looks. It looks like the devil with horns and carrying a serpent staff, right, you guys, to those who know evil, to those who know evil yet right? Given the knowledge of good and evil. To those who know evil, um, it might look rather evil. And what do people think miracles? Those that have the knowledge of evil think miracles might be magic. And to them, that's not very holy, okay? It's witches, right? And wizards and all of that is off limits, to the people with the forbidden fruit, right? Okay, so that's why, you guys, it's kind of hard to understand that we could look evil, especially when we're trying to bring peace. But it's the same they accuse Jesus of, right? Um, Beelzebub, okay? Okay. So that's it. This was a wonderful revelation for me this morning. And I hope it um, sets in with you and you understand that I, I see us um, completing our Mercury journey. Okay. Um, the next level, you know, is the sun. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.